Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. Boy, they go fast, don't they? I cannot believe how fast these weeks go. You know, I'd like to slow them down a little bit. You know, and uh, you know, nobody wants you know to go so fast that you wake up and tomorrow you, you know, you're old, <laughs> which we can't really help, can we? A uh, couple things to talk about today. You know. We've been doing our half and half tools, uh, kind of on that kind of kick, and we're gonna do another one today, but different. This is a viewer request. A good friend of the show by the name of Hester781, but he said, you know what be cool? He said if you did uh, a pliers, half and half, you know, he took it apart, did half and half, and I said, yeah, that would that'd be a cool idea. So that's what we're gonna do today, and then we got some tool reviews, so maybe some tools you haven't seen before, we'll give them a shot, and. Uh, See what else we can conjure up here. So let's get okay, started. To really enjoy doing one of these projects, the half and half, it's really good to start with a somewhat rusty kind of beat up tool. You know, if you're going to do something that's in decent shape, it doesn't really show the real contrast. So here we have a nice old pair of uh, slip joint pliers. I think I have a couple of these. And uh, now all I have to do is decide which one, which arm I want to do now this is what I was thinking do I want this to be polished this cap here along with this hand and uh, leave this one unpolished with this because we're, we're gonna have to take that off uh, let me think and then we'll take it apart and see what it looks like okay it came apart no problem you know they do peen these over so you have to when you're backing the nut off uh, you just got to run it under the wire brush for a little while to straighten out those threads because the threads do get screwed up and I do put a little 50 50 to try and get it off but you see the threads they're peened over it gets a little screwed up so you know you always got to be careful of that trying to get that nut back on but I think what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, this top here polish this out because it always looks real nice when you do that right we put that in a drill put it to the belt sander and then we'll do this side and uh Leave this one to its own devices. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. And, and this these pliers were, you know, there was no, uh, no attention paid to the way these look. You see, we have a little bit of a marking there. I'm sure we'll lose that. But uh, look at that seam mark on this one, huh? Look at that. <laughs> they really, they just stamped these out, threw them into a box, assembled them, and threw them out. But, uh... The jaws are, you know, are good. And, you know, these, we, a lot of times these were very good steel. A hard steel because, you know, you can tell by the jaws. When you see jaws that are beat up and, and mushy, that's because the steel wasn't too good. But uh, we will uh, see what it looks like. And let's get uh, to the, we'll start with the flap wheel because we'll take the seams off with that. And then we'll go to the belt seam. Okay, this is everything with just a flap sander. Now we're going to go to the belt sander. You see the flap sander will we'll leave a little bit here and there. You see that? But uh, the, then you could really contour it nicely with the belt sander. But it gets off all those seams, you know, and everything. That's that's usually a little bit more difficult to get off. And, uh, and now we'll go and, and fine tune this. Now, when dealing with these pivot bolts, and look how bad of a shape this one is. It's all pitted and whatnot. It's after the wire brush. Uh, what I find the best way and easiest way to do it is to chuck it up into a uh, cordless drill. And uh, we're going to start here with a very coarse belt. And I like to go just under the top wheel. You see the top wheel there? Just under there. This way it stops it from slipping off the belt. And rotate it from left to right just to make sure you get the whole area. And you're going to perform this with three different belts. This is coarse. You're going to go with medium and then fine. But this is what it looks like right after the coarse belt. You can see we got rid of all the pits and the rust. It's a good way to do it. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these rusty pliers look like before we started. And we are calling this project done. You know what this reminds me of? Remember the old Star Trek episode with Frank Gorshin when he's uh, like half white and half black? <laughs> you remember that episode? Uh, okay, so here we go. Look at that. First of all, let's take a look at this. We did this uh, really nice, right? I mean, we did this real nice. 
Look at that polish on here, inside and out, just absolutely beautiful in the hand. And then, bam, we have this thing. Oh, yuck. And it feels in the hand exactly like you would think it was. It feels so wrong. <laughs> because, you know, obvious. And it works beautifully, you know. I tightened it up. It works uh, just perfectly. The jaws, look at that. Look how nice they came out. There's the before, and uh, yeah, this is the only thing I couldn't do. I could, I had to peen this over again, so I couldn't, uh, you know, keep that rusty. But other than that, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty interesting. Look at that. You know, somebody says, "What the heck is that abomination?" And you say, "Well, this is what it looked like before." And they're like, "That makes no sense." And you know, well, it kind of does. You know, no, it doesn't. Okay. Let's see what else. Uh, we last week I picked up a few tools, uh, drill tools, things like that, and I thought you might be interested to see what they look like. Let's go check yep, them. I out. also picked up because uh, this one here, high speed steel. Always love high speed steel. You see, these are the regular sizes here in in the states, and what they are is a drill tap combination. And uh, I got to tell you something. Uh, you know, I used one of these once before. These are great to have for certain projects. Let me show you how they work and why they're so Now, great. these are called combination bits. And when they say combination bits, they're not kidding. Let me show you everything it does. First of all, it drills the hole to the proper size. Then it will tap it. In this case, it's a quarter by 20. You could see here it says quarter by 20. Okay. So what happens is this will drill the hole. It'll tap it, and then you also have a small countersink back here that uh, can give you a slight countersink if you're putting in, you can see it here, if you're putting in a, a countersunk machine screw. So let's try one of these out because, like I said, they're really interesting, and uh, they do work. I, the ones I used, I've never tried these before. Let's now, to test it. this out, I uh, chucked up a piece of... Uh, of this PVC molding that I have. It's always good to test it out on something like that. And here you see we're using a 10 32nd combination bit. And we'll just drill it in here. We're using, again, we're using a, a cordless drill. Slow speed just to get it started. And then the uh, threads should pull it through. So we'll see how that works. Now I'm going to reverse it. Okay, now you see, I went all, all the way to the end, put a little bit of a, a countersink on there, but look how nice that is, huh? Now, here's a 10, uh, 10 30 second screw, and we'll uh, put this in here. Look at that. Very nice. Goes in very nicely. What a nice, what a nice combination drill, huh? I mean, uh, you can't ask for a better system than that. Let me just... See if we can get this one to work on here. <laughs> Little overkill, right? But uh, yeah, look at that, huh? That's that's a nice job. It does a great job. There's a close up of the hole, and you can see how thick it was that it went through. So you know, it uh, it does a uh, a nice job, like I said, for doing it. Now uh, let's try it on aluminum. Okay, now here's the aluminum, and we could see here that. Again, a beautiful fit on here. Very nice. The tolerances, again, not too much slop. You see I'm moving it around. It's a very nice. It's a good system, especially for thin materials, things like that. Uh, and, and they're cheap enough to get if you want to try them out. They're uh, very inexpensive for the and set. And there's what the threads look like on the aluminum. So, uh, like I said, they do a nice job. You know, job. I was uh, looking through YouTube today, through some of the uh, some of the channels that I, uh, I subscribe to and things like that. And... Uh, there was a post of a 1958 Studebaker pickup truck, and ah, oh, man, I was looking at this truck. I'll put a link in the description. You, If you really want to see a, a nice truck, and I was thinking to myself, you know, if you could go back in time, you know, it must have been great during the late 50s, and some of you were around back then buying cars. You know, I was still just a little bit young, but... um. It must have been great. Every year, the cars seemed to be getting, like, better and better. Like, you couldn't wait to trade in your car because, you know, 1955 and then 56 and 57, they were all getting like, wow, everything's getting better. I grew up in, this, you know, the 70s by the time I was driving, and everything was getting worse. Every year, there was more and more junk coming out. 
you know, we had those oil and gas embargoes and things like, you know, you know, I don't even want to get into that whole thing. The gas shortages. And uh, do you remember the, the garbage that was coming out that they were pushing out on us? And, and then all the pollution stuff they were throwing on. And it was just in the mid 70s, the cars were just and the rust and the rot. And uh, but boy, in the the late 50s, I'll tell you, I looked at that Studebaker and I said, geez, I can just, you know, it was simple. So simple. I mean, you just, you look at this thing, you go, I could fix that. I don't, you know, I don't have to bring it anywhere. I could do everything on this truck, but you know, but I, I know vehicles have gotten better now, especially lately, especially in the years, you know, 2000s and stuff. They're very reliable and they're good cars, but, uh, but they were made well. I mean, back then they were just solid. And, and I was thinking we take a lot for granted. And one of the things we take for granted is cameras. Do you remember, I know a lot of you are old enough to remember when we had a film cameras, you know, and how expensive it was to take a picture. And, you know, we take it for granted now with these. We could take a dozen, you know, 20 pictures and just pick the one we want. Back then, you had to make sure everything was right. You don't want to waste your film and everything. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, growing up uh, back in the 60s and 70s, if you had a, a camera like a 35 millimeter camera, you know, this is a very inexpensive one. In fact, this one is so inexpensive. It's considered like a early, this one's made in Japan. It was a point and shoot had a no focus adjustment. You just adjusted the aperture. It had one shutter speed. That was it, one shutter speed. And you remember you had to put the film in here and pull it out and put it into the take up reel and then turn the take up reel until <laughs> until it, you didn't want to take up too much because you didn't want to waste any pitches, but you want to make sure it took enough that when you closed it, that you wanted to make sure <laughs> You would keep an eye on this one after a while to make sure that that was spinning. So, oh, thank goodness it took up. There were so many things we had to learn back then. Remember with these? But do you remember in the 70s when they came out with this? Do you remember the Polaroids? Boy, this was something else. I remember these cameras back then. Now, the Polaroids, what was so nice about these is when you shot the picture, you, you know, you push this button and it pulled out. Remember this little door? pulled out and then you waited for maybe 60 seconds or whatever it was and and then uh and then all of a sudden you had your picture right there you didn't have to take it to the film developing and but they were a little bit more expensive but i was looking at this camera and this is kind of a transitional camera because uh what's interesting about this is you put the you snapped uh you know your film went in here and you loaded it it did have it didn't have the cartridge that they came out with later on and look at this it says replace batteries every year right date here you know and uh thank goodness there's no batteries in here i checked because they'd probably be all corroded but um then what you did was uh it this was like i said transition still had the flash bulb remember flash bulbs jeez that's that's dating ourselves right you had to push a little flash bulb in here this was the release when you're finished and and here was your distance with flash you would just turn it like this and and when you look through the the viewfinder here, there was a battery that would light up and show you if you had enough light or not. And but these were interesting. And and again, imagine carrying around this thing to take. And how many pitches did we get? Tw you know, twelve maybe with these Polaroids. And you know, with this, you could get up to thirty-six pictures. You know, things have changed so much. We're so blessed when it comes to cameras. So in closing, we? it is good to know that some things really are getting better, even though sometimes it doesn't seem that way. But there are things that are getting better. And we just, you know, a lot of times we have good thoughts of the past, you know, better than they actually were. But uh, the camera is definitely getting so much better. And uh, it seems like they keep improving. Uh, good news. I don't think we'll be doing any more half and half wrenches or anything to us, which I know for a lot of you. Is a uh, is a great relief. I know uh, uh, Joe Shop did a great one, and uh, he did a great caliper, a Staric caliper, and he was having the same exact feelings I was after the after it was done. It's a strange feeling. So anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Take care now. Bye bye. <laughs>